Hello everybody, welcome back to Cure of the Common Game. Today, in deck number 523, we're going to talk about Inala Archmage Ritualist. Now, this is from Commander 17. Yes, I still haven't got around to building this one until now. Uh, there's a lot of these that uh, it would seem like I've already gotten to, but I haven't. But Inala's one of them. And I'll be honest with you, because I really didn't know... I mean, yeah, we're going on... Well, it's been over two years. I didn't know what direction I wanted to go with it. So let's read it. For five mana, two in Grixis, do we get a legendary human wizard with eminence? Whenever another non-token wizard enters the battlefield under your control, if Anala is in the command zone or on the battlefield, you can pay one. If you do, you get a token copy of that wizard. Token has haste. It exiles at the beginning of the next end step. You can tap five wizards you control. Target player loses seven life. Now, I'm sure there are good and proper ways to build this, but I just didn't want to. I didn't want to go to EDH Rick and just copy off a, a list, and I I couldn't for the life of me. I, I got uh, what is it called? Uh, it's not writers. I guess it'd be deck builders block. <laughs> so to with an all up. I was like, well, this is Grixis Wizards. I mean, a lot of times you do blue wizards or blue red wizards, you know. But Grixis Wizards is uh, something I haven't done yet. And I was like, well, it, it, I mean, it's begging to be tribal. So I didn't really know how, where I was going to go with it until I sat down and I went, oh, Grixis Wizards. What about if they, every card, if they were all multicolor? So we have no monocolor cards in the deck. Um, I guess the first thing we need to start off with is the actual wizards. And you'd be surprised how many legendary wizards there are in, uh, or legendary gold wizards that there are. Because I like gold. Uh, we're going to start with Jory and Rune. Of course, you cast your second card, uh, spell each turn, draw a card. Uh, Adelie's the Cinder Wind. Flying Haste, Instant Sorcery, uh, it's, uh, uh, what is that, Super Prowess, Team Prowess, Wizards you control, get 1-1 one, one to end of turn. Now, the Instant and Sorcery sub-theme here is going to really be evident because evidently most gold wizards like Instant and Sorcery. So, we have Marisil the Pretender from that same year. Yeah, I bought way too much of C-17. I think I bought five copies of each deck. I don't know. It was way too much. That was back before Wizards had a set coming out every month. Uh, Kess, Dissident Mage. Marchessa, the Black Rose. I, in my Marchessa deck, I, I just kind of, I guess, missed the fact that she's a wizard. Uh, Tagum, Tagum, Sidisi's Hand. Niv Mizzle, that's right. Malik, is it Paragon? Nin the Pain Artist, and that's just the legendary ones. Now, I, I kind of, you know, just me. I consider Shadow Mage Infiltrator uh, to be legendary, even though it's not legendary. I also don't consider this artwork to be Shadow Mage Infiltrator. I, um, Johnny Magic, uh, John Finkel, uh, it's his card. Uh, he won the Invitational that year, and he's always loved the Ophidian. And he wanted an Ophidian that dealt the damage and got the card draw. Nowadays, I mean, this card originally printed was a, it was a hot rare. It defined standard, you know. And over time, I mean, in Masters 25, they printed this as an uncommon. And it's about on current uncommon power level so anyway we have Nivix Guild Mage they run out of names for them Guild Mages ain't they uh, <laughs> Storm Chaser Mage got prowess you know non-creature spell uh, Goblin Electromancer our instant sorcerer is going to cost one less pretty neat Madungu you would be surprised oh my gosh how many times people walk into this card it's just, it's on the board, and you'd be surprised. I mean, 
knowing what it does, even having it countered one of their spells before, and they still walk into it. It's a great card. Uh, Tonebound Lich, Death Touch, and Life Link. Uh, by the way, there's no flavor tie there. It's just our aesthetics as humans. We like the life and the death on the same card. But anyway. Uh, Lightning Stormkin. I figured, you know, Flying Haze 2-2, sure, why not? We're going to need a low curve, right? To Mercurial Chemister. Is it Cronarch to get back some of those instants or sorceries that are in our yard? Goblin Flectolancer, changing the targets of an instant or sorcery. Dusk Mantle Seer. Each player reveals the top card of his or library, loses life. Uh, this is a bob for everybody, I, I guess. Architects of Will. Anathomancer. Now, Anathomancer is uh, here again. I knew it was a zombie. It kind of escaped me that it was a wizard. I play it in a lot of Rakdos stuff because our format, people crutch on non-basic lands so much. I mean, I mean, and I do it too. It's one of the first things that I, I do when I build a deck is I get all my all the non-basics that I want to put in a deck and then I fill out with basics. But uh, I have... Uh, now, if I was only upkeeping, you know, 20 decks or so, I would probably have a lot more non-basics because they wouldn't be spread across all of them, you know. And a lot of people have, shoot, have decks where there's only going to be a couple of basics in the deck. And this is just going to deal an insane amount of damage. Lich Lord of Onk, so let's make some bodies, shall we? I mean, uh, zombie wizard tokens, so that's the beautiful part there. The tokens are also zombie wizards. Neat. Uh, we Dragonauts, uh, yeah, we Dragonauts may not be the right fit for it, because it's not like we're doing storm things, but I love we Dragonauts, and I had the foil, you know, so y'all know me, yeah. Part Raccoon, I love the shiny. And Blood Cultist. Now, that is our creature base. Uh, so let's look at our artifacts. First, we're going to start off with just Dragon Arch. Now, there's not a whole lot of... I get it, the Dragon Arch costs five, and most of our creatures are cheaper than that. However, after that initial investment of five, two to pop a multicolor creature into play... Now, that's an instant speed ability, so there are times when that comes in handy. Um, after, oh, shoot. Oh, here I... Okay, I just remembered a couple cards. Uh, they were recent in the past, I don't know, four or five years. Um, oh, shoot, multicolor spells you play cost one less. And then it seems like uh, gain. There's another artifact that said gain one life for each multicolor, or each color in a multicolor. It's, I don't. Those would have been great cards in this deck. I am deficient. I forgot about them until this exact moment when I was reading Dragon Arch. So let's look at our mana, shall we? We have our usual suspects. You know, uh, Demir Signet. Is it Clue Stone? Is it Locket? Rakdos Locket. Demir Locket. I love the lockets because once you get tired of them, you can draw cards out of them. Um, Misfine Border Post, Obelisk of Grixis, Manolith, Don't Tell Dana Roach, uh, <laughs> Sealgar Monument, and Colligan's Monument. That rounds out all of our artifacts. Uh, I wasn't exactly sure how to, how to present this deck to y'all, so I, I did it by categories. Uh, our single one and only Enchantment is Cloven Casting. Uh, wherever you play it, I, the reason why I did that is I saw that there was, we were kind of a little bit leaning on the instant and sorcery thing. And I was like, you know what, seven mana is a bunch for a do nothing enchantment. But if we're already going to have some, you know, instant and sorcery focus here, spending a mana to copy it. And so I got to thinking, I was like, well, is it going to matter? I mean, what am I copying? Cruel Ultimatum. That's exactly what I'm copying. Yeah, this is 
the sorcery to copy uh, because there's nothing says love and like hitting two players with their own personal cruel ultimatums. <laughs> um, epic experiment, also you know an instant and sorcery thing. Um, just gonna play a bunch of them. Slave of Bolus, Teleportal. I like Teleportal simply because that unblockable word and Overload. So all of my creatures can be plus one and unblockable. Okay. I don't know why I haven't been playing this in more decks. Fumarol. I, this one, I just don't think is appreciated enough. Yes, it is sorcery speed at five mana. Uh, you pay, uh, oh, it's, I'm sorry, it's five mana and three life. You destroy a creature and a land. That can solve a lot of problems. And then, of course, we have Into the God Eternals. A um, lot of creature removal here because that's, let's face it, we need it. Um... So let's look at Fire Covenant. Now, Fire Covenant has is one of those secretly uh, rising behind the scenes cards. I didn't realize it. I had a bunch, I put together so many Ice Age sets way back then that uh, I, I have a ton of Fire Covenants still to this day. And this may be one of the better condition ones. They all saw a lot of play. You know, sleeves wasn't a thing, but Fire Covenant deals X damage. Divide it any way you choose among any number of target creatures where X is equal to the amount of life you pay. This is a beating. And in decks like, uh, what's the new, Grieven? Oh my gosh. Uh, uh, man, I hope I've got one in Grieven. Do I have Grieven done? I don't remember. Tell you what, if I haven't got Grieven done, it's going to go in the new Grieven. If I've already got it done, then I'll put one in the next time I update that deck. Um, we have soul manipulation. Choose one or both. Okay. Counter target creature or raise dead. Now, Essence Vortex doesn't look like much. I'll admit. Uh, by the way, bury target creature. Uh, that phrasing was used to denote that it couldn't be regenerated. Uh, the long form would have been destroy target creature without possibility of regeneration. Uh, they hated on regeneration for so long. Don't know why. It's not like it was powerful or anything. But anyway. But uh, this is very conditional. It does depend on some an opponent making a choice because they can pay that creature's toughness in life. Now there are times when you can manipulate it to where they don't have it or they can't. Or it wouldn't be a responsible thing for them to do. Like me, I'm not a responsible magic player. Uh, I'm not at all. Ooh. Uh, unlicensed Disintegration. Destroy target creature. Bituminous Blast. You never know what you're going to get. Right? <laughs> there we go. Get into our counter spell section. Double negative counter two spells. Now, for the life of me, I've never understood the uh, importance of countering a whole bunch of spells on the stack. Because it, I mean, storm I get, but most non-storm scenarios, it's not like everybody's just pouring a ton of spells on the stack. You have your occasional counter spell war. Uh, but I, I, I don't know. That's why Flusterstorm, I, I just never got. Suffocating Blast. It's, uh, I think the colorless here, sh I mean, if it wasn't for that colorless, this would have been like a gajillion dollar card. Because it literally would have been Counterspell and Lightning Bolt together. Well, target creature. Uh, counter Flux. Here's another one. Counter Target Spell uh, Overload, what? Uh, is it charm? Mind swipe. Demir charm. You know, Tyrant Scorn. I'm really liking. I really am because there's a lot of creatures, a lot of CMC three or less that are there. P 
people don't attack with them, but they are there and they are causing a problem. You know, laboratory maniac, um, whatever. There's a bunch. Croesus' charm, since we're doing the charm thing, right? Uh, <laughs> a, a lot of options. Options are as good. Breath of Malfagor. Five damage to each opponent. Uh, late game, this can mean, you know, eliminating one or two of them. Backlash. Target, tap target, untap creature. That creature deals damage equal to its power to its controller. The important part here is the creature deals the damage. It does not care about summoning sickness. I've got this in there because if somebody plays a dark or a blight steel colossus, they're going to die to their own colossus. That's right. They're going to infect themselves out. Swerve. I love the fact that you can actually some cards. The name just says everything you need to know. Uh. uh we don't get that a lot anymore because all of the simple names have been taken years ago. Uh, but Swerve, if I cast something and somebody says Swerve, you can pretty well guess, even if you've never seen the card, what it does. It's so like, um, you know, Steel Artifact. You can pretty well figure out what that one does. <laughs> uh, Leap of Flame. Steam Augury. And our last non-land card is Agony Warp which is more times than not removal. It's a pretty good combat trick. You can... Uh, it's actually a combat trick that not a lot of people see coming t t because you can just alter... Yeah. So let's look at our land base, shall we? Uh, we have, of course, a command tower because, you know, I like to run those in three-color decks. Uh, the Crumbling Necropolis is our tri-land... Uh, Terramorphic Evolving Wilds. Uh, we're going to get into some Guildgate action with Rakdos. Is it Swiftwater Cliffs? Whoop! Card won't stay in there. A lot of air in these new sleeves because of the of the double sleeve. <laughs> uh, is it Boilerworks? Occam Refuge, Cinder Barrens, Dismal Backwater, Highland Lake. Bloodfell Caves. And lastly, you guessed it, Rogue's Passage. Because, you know, why not? But that is it for Inala. Uh, yeah, it may not be the... Let's move my spit screen out, out of the way. Uh, by the way, check out the, the mic here. Uh, this is Bay right here. This is the Blue Yeti. Uh, I'm, uh, I really love it. It was recommended me, uh, to me by Phil DeLuca uh, from from the Commander. There we go. A little better focus. Uh, Phil and, and Shivam, um, that, that's a great, great podcast. Uh, they've had me on there once. Um, looking forward to actually seeing if I can, uh, when he talks about doing it again, uh, talk about a couple decks, you know, because it, it, it's a pure Commander podcast. And I think now... Olivia, uh, Olivia Cobra Thicks is, uh, she's on more episodes than she's not. Love her to death. Uh, time to put 523 on the wall. In Allah. So, we have got going quite a bit. Uh, what is this, 13 days into the year now? And I've got one deck left. Uh, tomorrow is going to be not your typical Boros deck. But gonna have to, it's so hard it's so hard right now for me to because i've got like if you can see the table all of these 27 deck boxes that i i've got for the new set for theros beyond death and i just want to get over there and start pre-building those decks as much as possible because let's face it new set comes out we build the commander how many cards from that set are we really using for that deck um, I have noticed that no more, generally no more ever than 10. Unless it's something weird like the Commander set. Um, but a, a normal, run-of-the-mill standard set, I'm probably going to get 5 or 6 cards per set. Uh, I try to use as much as I can because, you know, it, it's a, a new set. We want to try to get the new flavor and all, all that jazz. Uh, and there are some 
more than others that just work with that strategy. But we'll see once we get our hands on the cards, which is... Oh, shoot, this is pre-release week, isn't it? Because this is Monday, so the pre-release is Friday. Now, I'll, I'll admit I may not... The reason why I'm telling you all this is I may not be able to keep up the uh, every day, a deck a day, because I'm, I'm building a deck <laughs> every day uh, just to keep up. And that's kind of rough, you know. Uh, but... So we'll keep it going as long as we can. Maybe we can get through till pre-release, and then after the pre-release, I can start. Who knows what legends I'm going to get in my pre-release haul? So uh, we'll have some box opening videos because everybody seems to love that. I like doing them. Uh, you know, I'm opening the stuff anyway, right? Try to try to get to get my uh, my GoPro out, and we'll take it to the LGS and see if we can't. Uh, to record some pre-release action. Anyway, I appreciate y'all watching. That's, that's far enough of me rambling. Uh, we'll see you tomorrow. Right now, it's time to shuffle and cut.